like you to hit the like button at the beginning because every time you hit the like button, you are letting YouTube know that what you are seeing and hearing is edifying for you so it can be shared with others. That's why hitting the like button is so important. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. It had to happen. Your, your title was so powerful when I read the, your, 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 uh, the name of your uh, ministry. Mm -hmm. It had to happen. Let's welcome our host, Erica Wilson. which is now coming up to three and a half years, has completely invested in everything on my You you've been on mute, honey. You've been on mute. We couldn't hear you. Welcome, 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 everyone. We're here live today with the girl, Erica Wilson, and it had to happen for our Monday Night Madness. And tonight's topic is leveling up with Coach McKay, right? And we're going to talk about the myths and recruitment of football. So there's a world of myths, right, surrounding recruitment and football. Now, let's be clear. These are just fun stories that Coach McKay would tell us all about tonight. Remember, every journey is um, to college or professional uh, team starts with hard work and dedication. So what are football myths, right? The NFL is a source of constant fascination, given how many people follow it with so much passion and so much devotion. This isn't just a sport. It's everything we think. By the time we finish this story, I mean, this broadcast, we pray that Coach McKay and the moms can shed so much light on football myths. So buckle up. Let's get ready for this ride with my sissy Sandra Perryman and sissy Stacey Sherrill waiting for our other sissy to come in, Coach Kamala, I mean, sorry, Kamala uh, Douglas. So ladies, what do you think about tonight's topic? It's going to be a very interesting topic. I can't wait to hear all the myths and all the facts, hearing everything else that goes with it, leveling up. <laughs> mm. What are you about you, Stacey? I'm excited because Coach K can share both sides of the lens. He's been a player, so he can tell you about the recruitment, being recruited 
and also mm -hmm. developing as a player. He can also speak on a coach's point of view, because now that he's a coach, on what they look at in recruiting players and also how they would like for that player to be developed. So it's good to hear from someone that's actually walked the walk. Correct, ladies? On yes. both sides, yes. Exactly. So let's go ahead and bring in our other sister, Kamala David, uh, Douglas. I'm sorry, we don't get Davis. Who's Davis? <laughs> you uh, think of Angela Davis, girl. You think of the power behind the name. <laughs> yes. Angela all Davis. Right, that's yes. All right, all girl. right. <laughs> hey, sisters. Hey, hey, hey girl. girl. <laughs> all right, sissy Sam. Okay, hello everyone. Our guest on tonight is Coach Mikael McKay. Coach McKay is a former gridiron football wide receiver. He played with the National Football League where he was a member of the Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, the Chicago Bears, the Indianapolis Colts, the Denver Broncos, Tennessee Titans, and the Dallas Cowboys. He also played with the San Antonio Commanders of the Alliance of American Football, AAF and the New York Guardians of the XFL. He played college football at the University of Arkansas before transferring to the University of Cincinnati. He has returned back home as the current head coach at his alma mater, Marion C. Moore School. Let's give a warm welcome to Coach Mikhail McKay. What up, Coach? What up, Coach? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Don't hurt him, Coach Matt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We're great. So if you can, we heard Sissy tell all about you. But if you can, you could just go ahead and tell us a little bit more about you. Um, well, you guys are, are spot on. Um, first of all, thank you all for having me here. This is an awesome platform that you guys are doing this. I, I'm, I'm highly appreciative of, of the opportunity. Um, but, yeah, just a, a, a background kid, a background story about myself, just a young kid growing up in Houston, Texas. Um, my grandmother pr predominantly raised me. Um, you know, she was a, a had a Christian background, so you know, some morals and things like that were brought up really early. Um, I was one of the hardhead uh, kids of the bunch. You know, I had to learn a lot, mess up a lot, um, for me to get it right, and uh, that followed me throughout my life. You know what I mean? And um, it was it was it was just so awesome to be around. You know, a big community in Houston. Um, well, then actually, I I actually moved to Louisville, Kentucky in 2008, and uh, pretty much everything changed. It was for a new start for me. Um, to just kind of have a fresh start on life. Um, my grandmother brought me there. She's my rock, um, motivating me and pushing me to go out and chase, you know, my dreams and goals uh, or set new dreams and goals. And uh, that's pretty much when I, I kind of relived my my um, dreams of playing sports um, in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, where I played basketball, football, um, ran track, you know, and, and kind of exerted a lot of that extra energy that I had being a knucklehead into some sports, kind of like we, we want these young kids to do today. So, um, you know, I, I play sports on various levels uh, and also different pro levels. Uh, and now just being able to coach these young guys and give them a little bit of uh, what I've learned uh, means almost everything to me. Wow. You got that is really awesome. well spoken there. Well, oh, spoken. thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> been a, been a, lot, a lot of rehearsing, you know. <laughs> Well, here though, you said that you was one of the ones that was kind of like a knucklehead, um, but still your light is shining now. They saw enough in you to bring you back to your alma mater to be a head coach. That says a whole lot. So you're showing the youth that you can turn around as well. I mean, you know, you're letting them know like, oh, I was once you, so I can turn around, you could turn around too. So I commend you for that. Thank you so, so much for doing that. So Sissy Sam, you want to start off uh, with a question for Coach McKay? Football question. Okay. Was that your goal or was that one of your dreams to be a professional athlete? Yes, it was it was definitely a, go a goal of mine um, and also a dream. Uh, growing up as a young kid, before I can even remember, you know, I remember the highlights and I remember the Michael Jordan stories. And, and you know, I love Michael Jordan. So just, you know, not even before it becomes a basketball or football thing, I just I think it opens a portal to just being an ultimate competitor. Um, and everything, you know, whether it's tag outside or, you know, it's it's playing football and um, that kind of stuck with me. Um, so I always I never really had a favorite team, um, you know, growing up in Houston. I know everybody you don't like the Texas or the Cowboys. And I really didn't like anything, you know, uh, coming up. But then as I got as I grew um, and got older, especially making that move here, uh, you know, when real life kind of sinks in a little bit, 
um, and, and directions are, you know, you, you, your, your parents are starting to point you into certain directions. Um, it's, it's very cool to kind of think about some of the opportunities in the big colleges and things like that are around the area. And uh, once you see those things and once you watch NFL games and NBA games, and of course you see the money, then that kind of, that's when it kicks in to, to kind of being a professional athlete, at least for myself. Oh, wow. Man. Wow. So before we jump into the next question, we definitely have to bring on our brand ambassador because he's sitting back there like, I'm back here. We see you. <laughs> nephew. I got you. I got you. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Welcome to hey, our brand everybody. ambassador, Mr. Denzel Perryman. <laughs> hey, everybody. What's going on, Quatch? What's up, D? Hey. Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing. Man, I got to ask, did you take public speaking or something? Man, I, I I wish I did, man. But I tell you what, I'm a teacher now, so it, it might as well be <laughs> it might as well be mandatory with teaching. Hey, yeah, it, it was flowing over there now. I, I appreciate like, that, okay, my guy. I appreciate that. Over there. <laughs> and, you know, that's why I love the fact that Coach McKay is at more because mm -hmm. you know my no, give it up for uh, Coach Sutton. He was also the basketball. <laughs> coach um one of a a, a a very honorable young black man that was also there at more during the time my boys were there so all three of my boys went to more high school okay. and to see someone of when i say someone a young black male that has achieved in similar goals that other young black men that are there that's trying to achieve that that he's there now that he can show them that it is possible. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do it. You can achieve. You can be successful. You can go after your dreams. And it's just a pleasure to have him there more. I wish he was there a little earlier on. That's but, right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it is what it is. But I think, you know, more need more young men like you. So I applaud you, Coach K. Thank you. I appreciate yes. that. Yes, ma'am. Definitely. Definitely. You're on mute. Y'all and y'all mics today. <laughs> can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me at all? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Bruce Make sure I, yeah. <laughs> no, Bruce is coach. He's coach with him. You know my okay. son. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. He okay. was. He was. He was. He wasn't there by the time Bruce got there. Yeah, Why Bruce coach. Bruce coaches coach? our defensive backs. He helps out with our defensive backs. Okay. Mm hmm. I have a question from Coach McKay. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, McKay. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Awesome. So I see that you played for several teams, the Colts, yes, the Jaguars, Broncos, Titans, Bears, Cowboys, everybody, everybody. <laughs> so with that being said, I know it's challenging to go from one team to another team. What did that do to you as an athlete? What did that do to your esteem as an athlete? Um, and that's a great question. I think that probably was the toughest uh, part of being a professional athlete for myself, um, especially being in several camps um, on several different teams and understanding that you're not the worst player on the team. You're not the worst guy in that position room. Um, and, and, you know, continually being cut, you know, sometimes I was put on the team um, and it had nothing to do with what I've done lately. You know, sometimes my agent maybe pulled the string, maybe someone seen my, 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 uh, my workout or something from college, you know, just kind of being relevant sometimes gets you those jobs and then you get in there and it's a surprise to these guys like wow where, where'd this guy come from and uh met with a lot of uh, different coaches you know uh beneath the head guy and they hey, you should be playing in the league so it's it's a constant um struggle fighting you know the mental um you know and then you're fighting the physical as well because you got to stay in shape you know what i mean that's that's an everyday grind just being a professional athlete if you're not working somebody else is um, so, you know, it's just a constant beat down, of course, getting cut, but then also rebuilding yourself, uh, having faith in something. Um, mm -hmm. You know, um, I had kids. So just, you know, kind of whatever your why is, you know, kind of sticking to that why, because it's, it's a 50 50 chance when you when you re uh, receive that first cut, if you're going to you know, keep going or quit, especially for a guy like me, they call a guy like me a bubble guy, uh, late round draft pick to undrafted, a guy who's coming in and trying to steal a job in camp. Um, there's not many guys like myself on a roster that stick around. So um, just continuing to make different different uh, rosters, you know, continuously to win different workouts. As y'all said, I play for a couple of teams. So I've had to compete against other guys for that one spot. 
And, um, mm-hmm. you know, it's not always a guarantee or a certain that you're going to remain there. So I just I just would say, you know, just kind of, you know, having that why to believe in, um, constantly motivating yourself, having a, a huge support system. And uh, just trying to keep re- rebuilding yourself to uh, believe that you're still that same player uh, that that you were on draft day, or you know, working in the combine when you're around all the rest of the players. Wow. And Ben, though, you said that it was kind of like you know um, the bubble guy. Like you learn something every day, right? I never heard of that. But um, just to know you saying that um, and hearing, knowing that you said about the undraft or being late draft, right? As you, my son went undrafted. You played with my son at the Jaguars, but yes, um, you know, being he was undrafted. You see, mm-hmm. and the thing is, when you come in there, like you say, your mental that mental have to be right because you never know, and that's throughout the game. Period. You know, because it's not what you did last game or last practice. You got to bring your A game every practice. Am mm-hmm. I correct? Absolutely, and I want to share a, a story real quick. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna talk too much about Allen on here, but that is my guy. Um, I played with him in Jacksonville and also in Dallas. Um, and what's crazy, you know, it's, it's, it's God bringing me here to, to be with you guys and all of that. And, and God works in mysterious ways and setting this all up. Um, but I remember, and, and if you, if Alan sees this, he'll remember it as well. Man, we're in the steam room after a long day of practice. And I, and I, I've never done this before, especially as a, a, a NFL player, but I went to, I went to Allen and I, and I kind of read up on the story. That's what I did when I got to Jacksonville. I kind of looked up some of the guys in the room and just kind of read up on their story uh, because some of them was similar to mine than I even thought it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I we was in the staying room and I was just like, hey, man, your story is is, is gratifying, man. It's, it's really humbling. You know, it's it's, it's something that, that keeps me going to know that guys like you and guys like me can actually still, you know, get in this thing, earn a second contract, you know, reach that dream goal of being that ultimate, you know, NFL player that we all wanted to be. So, you know, it's 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 huge, and uh, it's definitely something that you know, as you see it done before, you build upon it yourself, and you kind of wear that jacket on, and you know, if they can do it, you can do it too. It's definitely motivating. Absolutely, and that's what mm-hmm. I was saying with you being where you coming from, where you came from. You were saying about you was you know where you were then, and mm-hmm. that's what a lot of times people try to hold us to where I then, but not mm-hmm. our now. So you're mm-hmm. here now, shedding so much light. So commit. I, I mean, hats off to you. Salute Thank to you, so you for what you're doing going back into the program. So Denzel, you have a, a question for Coach McKay. Uh, I mean, I could ask a question, but I think like as he was explaining, you know, like uh, you got to have your why. That was kind of going to be, uh, it would answer the question I was going to ask you. But, well, you say you played for multiple teams. Have you been, I guess, say, let go from a team and then like they brought you back at some point? Yeah. Um, and if so, what was your mindset? Like, how did you not, like, have ill will against these people? Because I ain't going to sound like in that situation, but, yeah. yeah. Team brought me back after, you know, many years of services. You know, not that I was in the service like that, but, you know, mm-hmm. many years of, uh, you know, work over there and whatnot. I end up getting let go. Now I'm back, like, with the team. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know. What well, like what what should be or what was with your mindset? You know when you got back to the organization, like how did you not have ill will? You know with these yeah. people. So I would say um I've actually never had that that situation been done to me, but a similar situation um kind of happened and I was with the Titans and um you know I was I probably had the best summer I had playing professional sports. Um was dominating and and, and camp. And um, it was like the, the the day before travel day uh, for the first preseason game. And for a guy like me, that's huge. Um, I ended up tearing my hammy. Um, grade two hammy tear in practice, uh, actually making a touchdown catch. Uh, tremendously changed my playing career. So, um, you know, I, 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 I it was my first time pretty much being injured. I took the settlement. You know, I really didn't know how none of that stuff worked and all of that. And um, the whole time I was going and training and everything, you know, I'm just wondering, like, my agent's telling me somebody could pick me up, la la la, but I'm not getting no communication. And then uh, I was brought back to Tennessee um, for a workout, and um, they could see that my my healing process wasn't as, I guess, as well that they would thought it would be. And um, you can just hear the trainer saying, like, "Hey, man, you know, it's probably not gonna work out here, but you know, somebody somebody will pick you up. You know, somebody, you know, whatever. Try to motivate me. You know, try to keep your head up or whatever like that." 
And um, it was just a, a, a ultimate hurt. And I just felt disrespected uh, just because I got hurt at that, at that program. You know, I was with you guys. I got hurt with y'all. And um, before I was hurt, y'all know what I was doing. You know what I'm saying? Right. I was working my way up the ladder. And for me not to get an opportunity, I understand, you know, that y'all y'all see my process, but we all know that the professional at the professional level, the stuff that they have to get your body right. You know, it's not they can get you right rather than getting you a settlement, whatever that may be. They brought me back and then signed me. And it was just like, I, you know, if they would have signed me, of course, I would have been gracious. Um, of course, I was in a different uh, situation than you were. Um, but them not signing me kind of it kind of let me down and. And it, it altered, you know, the, my professional playing career to the point to where, like, dang, they'll use you up and don't care about you no more. Coach McKay, I want to let you know, if you get injured, and parents, if you're listening, please do listen. If you get injured with a team and they let you go, they cannot do that. So that's why they brought you back after mm -hmm. giving you that settlement yeah. and then let you go. Mm -hmm. See, we need to know that as um, the athletes really do to know, need to know that and the parents because that's what will happen. They can't release you if you're hurt. Mm. You see, um, and, and it's till they're going to fight everything they can within them not to give you that settlement, but they have to bring you back in order to release you because they can't release you mm -hmm. once you're hurt. You see, so while you're going through that healing process, it's a business. That's how they look at it. It is a business. That's it. And not that they, it's like, you know, um, what could you do for me, basically? You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So that's why you use them because they're using your brand, which you are your brand. And you just have to make sure uh, you stay on top of But you say you didn't know. See, you yeah, didn't know. It was, it was, yeah, I had an agency and, and you know, you know how they talk, smooth talk, fast talk. It's all about the money. You know, everybody That's get a piece it. of the pot. You get a settlement, then that mean I get a couple hundred. You know what I mean? That's so it. that went how it went. And um, you know, as as a young guy, yeah, you know, I think my settlement was like thirty thousand dollars or something. As a young kid, you know, receiving thirty thousand dollars, oh, I'm gonna go get my body right and I'll be right back. You know, I'm gonna pick up where I left off. But um, you know, I, I was driving up to Cincinnati, kind of rehabbing myself on my own schedule. It's totally different from what they do on professional level. Um, it's totally different from the, the 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 things that they have, and me being a young player and, and not as knowledgeable, you know, it, it just a lot of that stuff just went, you know, went under the rug, and and it went how it went. You see, and that's why I say, you know, a lot of this is so important because a lot of people we don't know. Like you just taught me something that I did not know about the bubble player, you know. Mm -hmm. But this is why it's so important because things like this could slip right up under the radar. That's what's designed to do. Get them away from the parents. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because maybe some parents know, maybe some parents don't know. Whoever maybe they tied to, maybe they know, maybe they don't know. But the thing is, yeah, they cannot release you while you're mm -hmm. hurt. You know, they, they will, and then they'll bring you back, and they'll sign you, and you'll think, okay, I'm in, I'm good, I'm good. But in all honesty, nope. That's it. So we're going to go ahead to our breaking news really quick. Early morning, honey. <laughs> See, uh -oh. Sandy, did you did you ever tailgate? Yes, we tailgated <laughs> um, when the Chargers played the Dolphins, and that game, Allen was hurt, so he didn't play. Mm -hmm. So that's why Sissy Erica wasn't there. But yeah, when he played for the Chargers, we tailgated at the Dolphins Stadium. But it was hard for me to tailgate in NFL because he always played the weight. So mm -hmm. that year they played in Miami and we decided to to tailgate. It was about 25 of us. Wow. We, we had a good time. 
So Coach McKay, you heard about the tailgating and these ladies, especially uh, Sissy um, Stacy and Sissy Cam, they love, love, love to tailgate. So hearing that, you know, the tailgating is going on, you heard what Sissy Sand said, like sometimes she couldn't go and tailgate because Denzel was uh, far off somewhere. So she couldn't do the tailgating. What was that like to know that you had people in the stands to support you? Huge. Huge, huge, huge. Um, on every level, of course. Um, I think as a kid, you know, um, to, to be pushed to do your best. Um, and I will encourage any parent that, of course, is a parent of mine, the more Mustangs um, and their kid plays on our team to, to, to bring their family out and more friends to come support their kids. Um, because in the essence, we, we're trying to build that. But that's huge. Um, just the, a motivating factor like no other. Um, my grandmother, like I said, is my rock. Um, she used to come to the high school basketball games with big old fat heads with my names on them. You know what I mean? And just seeing that or just knowing that the person that you're playing for, your why, uh, is in that stands uh, supporting you is huge. So tailgating is, a, is, the, is the turn up. You know what I mean? Tailgate, that takes the sports game to a whole nother level. Um, that's for the fans, of course. Um, we promote that as well at more. Try to get the teachers out to tailgate before the game just to get some ultimate participation. Um, at those games, but yeah, I mean, I'm love it. I'm all for it. When I um actually transferred to Cincinnati, um, they would tailgate uh, all day while we were at the hotel, and then we had something called the catwalk, um, where all the all the fans and the band they were all lined up, and we would walk through them before the game. So you know that adds that extra that extra edge uh, going into that locker room uh, before you face those competitors. Absolutely. So before I pass the torch, I just want to tell you, you heard what she said, 25 people. Yeah, and as yeah. you can see, they show up in numbers. So let me go ahead and just show you real quick, Mr. McKay, before I go ahead and uh, pass the torch. Look at there. Darius. Welcome, nephew. Bro, welcome, welcome. Nephew, welcome, welcome. All of these appearances. Deshaun, our niece, welcome. Paula, <laughs> niece, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kwanzaa niece, welcome. Kenya, welcome. As you can see, they show up in numbers. Yeah, All right, ladies, pass the torch over to Sister Stacy. So we're we're speaking on recruiting and development, right? So as a coach, now that you're wearing these this lens as a coach, when you're recruiting or you're looking, like what it, what is that for you as a coach? And then speak on as a player when it, okay. when, it, when it comes to recruiting? So first and foremost, I'm gonna say I'm a JCPS employer, Coach K does no recruiting. All right, I'm gonna say that first and foremost, Coach K don't recruit nobody's kids, um, just in case somebody from the employers are watching. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, a way that we recruit um, at the high school level at Moore is uh, we recruit in our building. We're, we're kind of a unique program. Um, we actually have sixth through 12th grade in our building. So we're one of the, the, the um, I think it's us and maybe WB Du Bois, like some of those schools are pretty much those only public schools that have a middle school that is attached inside of the high school. So uh, for me, what a, a, a average day of recruiting looks like is Coach K on his lunchtime, maybe walks in the cafeteria and just say what's up to the eighth graders. You know, just say what's up in the hallway um, to the seventh graders, speak to a couple of teachers, um, you know, and just encourage the high school football program as well as going to our seven on seven games that are about to start here soon. Um, watching our middle school players, you know, talking to them, um, just letting them know that we want 100 percent turnaround for our school. We don't want any kid that's leaving um, the, that are leaving eighth grade at the more high, at more middle school to not come to more high school. Um, and there's a lot of different changes and nuances with the buses and systems and, and that stuff in JCPS. So uh, it does kind of make things difficult. But um, we just want to make sure that any kid steps in there as a sixth grader, that uh, they graduate as a 12th grader. And that's that's what we're kind of reaching for. Okay. Absolutely. So we're going to pass the torch over to you, Sister Cam. Let's go ahead and address our audience really quick. I didn't want them to feel left out. So Shannon Jaguar Steve-Rose, welcome, welcome. Janita, am I, Janita Hatcher, welcome. Yes, we sure did. Yes, we sure did. Hey, Trees. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, champ. I love you. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> All right, hey. Sister Cam. Yeah, very good. You know, I think what's awesome is that you had the opportunity to be the ball, see the ball, touch the ball, teach the ball. Like, that's dope. When you can be a player coach, you can be a coach player. Mm -hmm. um, you probably actually were a coach as a player. Were you one of those type of players? Oh, absolutely. You find yourself coaching your peers? Absolutely. Especially um, coming from the NFL and joining, like, a Lions football league and an XFL football league. 
um, those leagues are bringing in young guys. You know, I'm, I'm probably one of the oldest guys in that room. So, um, you know, those veteran coaches that are coaching in that league, they definitely look upon their older players to kind of help them out and make sure that his points are coming across. And sometimes even how to relate to some of the players that's in the room. Yeah, well, I'm actually married to a former player and a head football coach. Yeah. And um, so congratulations on your coaching position. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I know that's very challenging, but very um, rewarding as mm -hmm. well. How do you so, boy. <laughs> see the, the, uh, the way the doors are with seeing a player as a piece of meat? Mm -hmm. It's almost mm -hmm. like you put them back on a platform. It's, it's been likened to slave days. It's been likened to, oh, look at him. Look how tall he is. Look how big he is. I think, wait, what are you, 6'3"? Yes, ma'am. 207. Oh, yeah, look at him. They're they looking at you like a piece of meat. You know, now you're on the other side of the ball. Mm -hmm. Have you changed the way that you look at players? Or how can we how can we make it sound better? Mm -hmm. um, I would say um, as a, as a, a player first, um, my approach would be different. Um, and I would say any coach that's played the game, you know, you always going to want to have a linebacker that, that that's muscular. You know, you always want to have a wide receiver that's maybe taller. Um, you know, so there's all there's some sorts of body types for this sport. Um, but at the same time, um, it's about being smart. You know, it's about understanding the game um, background, especially when you come when you're talking about kind of recruiting. Uh, I would say, you know, being at the combine was probably one of the crazy experiences when you're talking about being look, looked at like a piece of meat. Um, and, and I just think it pretty much at my level, on the high school level, you know, any coach is going to is going to, you know, drool over having a six, three lineman, six, four uh, offense or defense lineman. You know, any of these players that are just, you know, blessed to have the size and speed that they have. But uh, you definitely want to take the approach of getting to learn who the kid is, um, learning what their background support systems are. Uh, before you even thinking about pushing the kid or recruiting him. Hmm. So what would Denzel you say? Look like he can relate to that. He was like, <laughs> how you shot at the combine? Yeah, nah, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. At the combine, they, I mean, he was being nice to the, the, the piece of meat thing. Like, actually, it felt like a slave auction. I gotta be careful. I'm not being honest. It felt like a slave auction because they make you just basically walk on stage. And they just there, do your height and your measurements, and then you know you, you know you just keep going. But like you know, you basically like just in underwear, you know. So yeah, like you said, you're a piece of meat. But I, I felt differently. I, I, you know, I took it back to like mm -hmm. the old days. To like slavery, honestly. Even what they have you wearing now, with the guy, what they have the guys wearing now, it's, mm -hmm. it's smaller. It's you can see more. I mean, it's some jokes out there about what be you know what you can really see. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure everybody's focus is on the right thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, Latrice says, Coach, it's been said that some universities aren't developing their student athletes for the NFL. How can those students develop themselves outside of the coaching they may uh, be receiving? Um, my answer with, with that would be um, social media is 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 broad for me. Um, I'm seeing all type of different videos of uh, guys that are working, you know, guys, professional guys that are working with other people to uh, enhance their skills and developments. Um, you know, uh, uh, one of the, the trainers and coaches that I know, he actually coaches now for the Saints, um, Coach Doug Williams, uh, Coach Keith Williams. He was a guy that you would work with in the offseason to get your game right. You know, he was one of those mentors as well that you can call personally. So, uh, I would kind of say kind of getting into that mentor uh, ship motive to where you can work with a, a person that can develop your game on and off the field. Mm, good. So what would you say would be one of the biggest myths of football? Biggest myths. Um, uh, that when you get to the NFL that you're rich. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, Denzel, what would you say, nephew? Nephew trying to order food. <laughs> what would you say would be one of the biggest myths of football? Boy, the biggest what of football? Myth. Myth? Yes. Uh, oh, what, what you said it was? Okay. It was uh that when you make it to the league that you rich? Oh, whew, yeah. I can go with that one. Um, that they really care about you like that. Um, uh, what's another one? 
Yeah, there's really no loyalty. There's no loyalty. So, yeah. I mean, he said it best when they done. I mean, you said it best. When they done with you, they done with you. Like, what have you done for me lately? You had to sip on that sin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I so, mean, that's- okay. my question. So, um, developing, mm-hmm. right? So, now that you're a coach and you've been a player, what are your techniques, so to speak, on developing your players for that next level? Mm-hmm. So, um, with us and my program and more, we, we're, we're pretty much in 100% rebuild. Um, to where we, we want to focus on pretty much developing our sixth grade kids. Uh, so when they're on the twelfth grade level, that they are flawless. Um, sad to say, um, some of our younger guys are more intellectually developed than our older kids, uh, which kind of makes it easier to teach those guys. Um, but I think it also, you know, a lot of a lot of these players, and, and we can get real for a moment. Um, a lot of these players think that you know they come in and, and they junior year, you know, they do all right, and then they senior year they do all right, and they gonna go D one. And that just ain't what it is. Um, and times have changed as well. So when I was getting recruited uh, back in 2012, I feel like it was a lot easier for me to go D1 and these kids have the opportunity to go D1. Um, there were no NIL deals and there were no transfer portals. When I transferred from the University of Arkansas, Brett Beamler told me that I couldn't go to another school in the SEC. Um, you know, I wanted to play for another school in the SEC. I was Arkansas. That was big time ball. Uh, but that's just not happening nowadays. So. Um, when you get to develop these guys, it's about breaking them down. It's about kind of rebuilding their reality. Um, and, and, and sometimes you got to hurt some feelings. You got to hurt some parents' feelings as well. Uh, but you never tell a kid he can't make it, you know, and I'm that prime example. And that's how I, that's what I tell each and every parent, um, that asks me anything about colleges is I would never, t- never tell your kid that he can't go D1. I want to tell him that he can't be a pro, but we got to take the necessary steps, you know, to be realistic with ourselves before we make these goals for these kids. Mm, absolutely. I have a question. Good evening, uh, really quick. Good evening, Nikki McLaughlin. Uh, thank you, Shannon Jack Wadiver, for uh, referring Shannon. I mean, sorry, Nikki over. Thank you so much. Welcome, Nikki. Go ahead, Cam. Yeah, I have a question about the relationship that coaches have with parents. Um, mm. Basically, sometimes it's like the parent thinks they're the assistant coach. They're going to tell you when they're going to put their child in, when you should put their child in, when you should take their child out, what number their child should have, Mm -hmm. how much playing time their child should have. How do you deal with a difficult parent when they're trying to tell you, they're trying to call your phone and talk to you about what you're going to do with their son? So uh, the first thing we we do at Moore is uh, we implement a 24 hour rule. Um, Mm -hmm. 24 hours after anything, you know, practice and whatever a parent feels once you ask me a question, if I'm not ready to answer that question, just give me 24 hours to think about that and give you a response back. Um, and that's huge for us because, you know, we never want to say anything about over emotion or, you know, how the, the question is being asked because it ain't always a good question. You know, when, especially when you got somebody that's worrying about playing time or whatever it may be. Um, and then the, the second thing after that 24 hours up, as I tell my parents, is that we have open practices. Um, we are a public school and we have nothing against our parents and pulling up and watching their kid practice. And uh, at practice, you will see the standards and, you know, the expectation that we have. And if your kid delivers, your kid plays. Um, unfortunately, my school is not a powerhouse in football at the moment. Uh, we're building that up. But um, I play young guys. Uh, and with that being said, if you are a young guy and you are talented and you are smart and you are developed well enough physically to play the game, I might put you in over an older guy if he's not, you know, meeting the expectation. So um, it's just all about, you know, being able to to kind of meet the coach's expectation, understand the standards, show up every day, and uh, and you'll be on that field. Wow. So if you were to have a parent that would approach you and maybe in a negative way, how would you address that parent? Um, would you take, I, and that's a two-part question. How would you address that parent? And I know sometimes the coach can take it out on the kid because of the parent has said something. So tell me, it's a two-part question. So um, I'm not going to act like I haven't dealt with this before. Um, there have been parent, plenty of parents that, uh, you know, have pressed some some of the wrong buttons. And, uh, of course, I always try to be professional as possible and just let them know that, you know, I'm an adult as well. You know, I have priorities and responsibility as well. Uh, coaching high school football in my life. Um, so I'm not going to, you know, do anything that would, that would, you know, cause me some credibility on myself. 
Um, so I would always, you know, hear a parent out. Just hear them out. Whatever they got to say, hear them out. I want them to get everything they got to say out. And then I would be able to let them know the reason, because it's a reason behind everything. If a kid is not playing, he's not showing up at practice. If he if he's showing up at practice, he's not going as hard as he can. If he's going as hard as he can, he's just not better than the kid that's in front of him. Um, it's kind of simple when you get the football. Um, but uh, on, on, the, on the other spectrum of that, um, just kind of understanding that uh, parents are, are always going to have an input, I would say. Um, and with me being also a player and, and a professional, I understand that a kid is a kid. You know, uh, uh, if, if, if I thought that my kid was the best, you know, quarterback on the team, of course I would want my kid to be a quarterback over this guy because I think that this guy has more of an opportunity to get a scholarship over my kid. Um, but what we all have to realize is that, you know, all of these kids are put on the same, you know, grade and standard. All these kids are put on the same performing platform. So even if you're the backup with no film, you know, you will have an opportunity to, to try to get some type of scholarship, maybe walk on somewhere, what it may be. But sometimes the the uh, the athletic level just doesn't meet. So I don't take anything out on the kids. Um, mm -hmm. It's not their fault they're not the fastest. You know, it's not their fault that they're the fastest. Some mm -hmm. kids are just blessed. And some kids just work harder than others, but um, I definitely don't 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 see any um positive positive outcome of uh, taking anything out on the kid at all. So we have two questions from the audience, but first we want to say welcome, Derry uh, De Williams, and welcome Eugene Sherrill. We also have a question. This is two good questions. All right. So J uh, Janita Hatcher says, "How would you support a student who loves football?" but wants to play flag football instead of contact football because he has two concussions. Mm. Um, that's, I mean, that's a real, a real serious uh, question right there because concussion protocol is very, very dangerous. Um, we all know that they're, they're, you know, changing the rules of football each and every day. Um, they also are, are, are creating different technology for helmets and uh, equipment to try to protect those things. Um, so, I, I think any form of football is great. Um, you know, of course, the goals kind of change as the end goal of pretty much what you want to do if you're not competing. Um, but I also, you know, you look on YouTube and like I said, social media runs the world. Um, you look and you see professional flag football leagues. You know, you see uh, spring, uh, sprint football, I think it's called sprint, sprint football, where it's like 185 pounds and under. Um, you can't be over 185 pounds and play sprint football. I think Bellarmine University here has that in Louisville. Uh, but you see these different opportunities that, you know, uh, the game kind of has graced us with and we're able to continue to play the game. So, you know, I think, you know, that's cool. And, um, you know, that's definitely going to protect the health of that kid, um, you know, kind of taking the helmet and then shoulder pads away from that game. Anything that, that wants to continue to motivate a kid to play the sport, uh, give something a, a kid a reason to be happy and proud of, you know, his parents a reason to be proud of them. I think I would encourage it, you know, no matter what. Mm. So the next question we have, so uh, real quick, is it how different is NFL and you said XFL you played? Mm -hmm. What is the difference? Um, so yeah, I played in the AAF um and the XFL. Um, and I would think I think the difference is uh it's it's pretty much the the level of greatness in the game. Um I don't think you can you can take the greatness away from these players that are playing in NFL. Um when I played in NFL, any play I made felt like a touchdown. Um, you know, um, also in the XFL, just because it's a huge platform, but it's just a level of 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 you know greatness that uh when you cross over that NFL line that every one of those players we get to we get to see. Last week there was a get it was at the USL FL, their combined mm -hmm. level. Yes. The Rock Johnson, he's one of the owners now, mm -hmm. I believe. Yes. The game seemed it was, it was almost like I'm so glad that these guys have somewhere else to go besides arena football. Mm -hmm. That's not to take anything away from arena football, but like you're saying, the level of greatness it didn't mean that you couldn't get it because like like yourself, you were there. Mm -hmm. But it's sometimes it's just that one cut. Oh yeah, that could change your life. Mm -hmm. How would you like to? How could you encourage someone who they're in that in between that mean time where I was the guy and I've used all of my eligibility, but now they saying I'm not the guy. Like, what would you encourage that guy to do? Um, just work harder because nobody's listening. Um, you know, it's 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 always a, a personal mindset that you gotta have and carry uh to remain at the peak of your game. 
So, um, you know, getting cut, you know, and, and, and transferring schools, you know, there was always that refresh button, you know, of, of if I'm this guy, you know, I got to prove it. So um, just by continuous, continuously to work, you know, not missing a day um, and prove it to yourself. I think it's most important to prove it to yourself. And once you prove it to yourself, then, you know, that should, that should be enough. Mm. Our next question comes from Latrice. Do you currently have a program set up for students to discuss NIL and the pros and cons of it? And if not, do you plan on creating one, especially with the um, current climate? Um, I don't at the moment, um, but you guys are inspiring me as well. I've been talking to uh, some of my partners about, you know, doing a podcast, especially in this area, uh, to kind of give some game like we're giving right now. Um, but I think all of that is huge, and I think it's needed. And I would encourage anybody in my area or any other area uh, doing what I'm doing or anything else to pretty much go ahead and launch it. You know, uh, you know, by by having this platform right now, we're all we're already giving people an opportunity. Uh, to get this game, you know, this free game and understand where this, these messages are coming from. And I just I just wish that, you know, we all did it more and uh, more people did it because it's so much information um, that goes on her. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I definitely, definitely plan on uh, looking into that. Absolutely. Go for it. I'm telling you, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. It's definitely worth it. It's very informative for um, a lot of, you know, not just the mothers and the fathers, but the athlete as well. Or maybe you was raised by your grandmother. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely needed. Definitely, definitely needed. Sissy Sam, we want to take it on over to you. Another question? Yes, ma'am. Well, he answered my question. I think you asked my question about, you know, how does it feel or how do you play when you know that you have a family member in the stand? Mm -hmm. And um, huh, do I have another question? He talked about they had a, the walk. They have a walk like we had at the Canes. We had our Canes walking. What was your walk called? Um, it was called the, cat, the catwalk for the Bearcats. The cat walk. I had the catwalk. They, they stole that for UM. I mean, um, they stole so it. You, you, got you, got you got it right. You got it right. You got it right. <laughs> they, they stole that from Kentucky. Because <laughs> we know we have the catwalk. Yeah. Back on mm -hmm. the play. Flag on the flag. <laughs> flag on the flag. <laughs> but I, I didn't know Cincinnati had one. That's 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 new. I, I would I would hope by now that everybody had. I mean that's huge. It's, as soon as yeah. you get off that bus, you know you you see them lining up. You know that's huge. I want to say almost every. I want to say Power Five schools should definitely have. One. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. like the highlight of mm -hmm. our morning or day or whatever start of the game is the yeah. catch. Mm -hmm. you know. right. So do you guys rock the bus too? Did you guys rock the bus too when you pulled up? Oh, we not. We weren't rocking no bus. It's, 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 you can hear a pin drop. You know, you can hear a pin drop. That's the ultimate focus. Rockin Getting up. the game face ready, making sure, you know, the picture, you ready for picture time and all that. Yeah, that's, that's prime time right there. <laughs> wow. That is yeah. so awesome. All the media is out there. Make sure your headphones. Yeah, that's everything. So, so when you, you play when you walk the catwalk, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. How did that make you feel yes. as a player? Going uh, to uh, two going touchdowns, a hundred yards, two touchdowns. You know, that's that's it's money. That's money. I mean, it just makes you feel like you're on top of the world. Mm. And then I have another like question. you're celebrity. <laughs> Look who got questions oh. now. Look who got questions. <laughs> yeah, I got questions. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, say it. <laughs> what is your what is your preparation going into a game? your your mindset you know like i know for denzel and i don't know why what happened to him he probably could have said <laughs> what his mindset is but is there a particular thing that you do a ritual uh do you do you have a, a song that motivates you or a song that that soothes you or what is your ritual for preparing for a game um i just try to i try to to, and this is gonna sound crazy, but uh, of course, playing in the game and uh, putting the helmet on, I want to be a different person. I don't want to be the same person I walk on the streets. Um, I want to, and I tell my guys like, when you put whoever your favorite player is, when you put on that 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 helmet, it, that's your costume. You know, put on that costume. So, um, you know, on that bus, that's that's pretty much the mental preparation when when you know you zone in and, and you kind of put on that costume. Um, I'm putting on any type of music uh, that's talking about overcoming being hated. Uh, whether it's Lil Boosie, whether it's Tupac, um, I just want to feel like, you know, 
everybody's telling me that I can't do it. And, um, you know, when you get off the bus, you know, then you see them fans telling you, you can do it. You can do it. You know, they all telling you, you can do it. So it's a mind, it's, 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 it's a mind game that you play with yourself. It's, it's totally mental. And, um, you know, it's, it's just getting you in that, in that, that mindset to, you know, be the best you can be. Yeah. Was there ever a time where you got down on yourself and you just was like, you know, man, is this really what I want to do? Oh yeah, of course. Um, I think those those come from those moments of, of being cut. I want to say, um, before I signed with the Cowboys, um, I was in Chicago uh, before they got Mac Nagy as the uh, the um, head coach, and um, he came in and I was with him for a, a couple weeks, maybe a month or so, and he brought me to his office and, and he let me know that I was being cut. Uh, before he let me know he was be I was being cut, he let me know that he didn't know who I was. Um, he let me know that you know. He don't even he didn't even know which college, you know, and, and I've been cut maybe three or four times before this. So to hear hear him say, you know, man, hey, you've been looking good this past week or so. But, you know, I, I you really don't know who you are. And, and then cut me. It was just like, dang, you know, dang, that's that's what he's on. So, um, you know, I had my car up in Chicago. I drove back from Chicago to Louisville um, where, I, you know, at that time I was just training, you know, waiting for uh, the next phone call. Uh, but, you know, kind of I had my daughter at the moment and, and taking her to school one day, you know, I, I broke down. I just broke down like what? <laughs> you know, like what? I'm I'm back living regular. You know, I'm back, you know, taking my daughter to school, dropping off. Where's the NFL? You know, where's the where's the superstar, you know, that I'm supposed to be? And, um, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where I say, you know, you just got to have faith in, in, in your plan, you know, and, and, and you got to believe in God, you know, and have something or have something to believe in, because. You know, after after I wiped my eyes real quick, I I, I quickly became myself again. You know, I quickly mm. remember who I was. I quickly ran to the hill. You know, drove up to the hill, put my cleats on, and uh and ran. You know, and just got right. And uh, it didn't take long, under a month, before I was with the Dallas Cowboys in camp again. And uh, that's when I had the opportunity to be around Allen Hearns and all that stuff. So, um, it's definitely happened. But you know, you just gotta wipe wipe the dirt off and, and keep pushing. Keep on going. It's in that waiting process, though. That waiting process is what okay. is uh, one of the hardest things to do, like when you're in that waiting process. And the thing is, too, uh, when they bring you in, right, they could bring you in, they could sign you and then come. Like my time where I was nervous and Sissy said you could tell me about yours, too. The time where I was nervous is when that cut time came. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're, you're out there, you're giving it your all, you're, you're just doing everything that you're supposed to do. And then here it is, they have to cut down to what? The 90 man roster first. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Then yeah. they got to do that next cut to that 53 mm -hmm. man roster, right? Mm -hmm. And then you may or may not can make it or maybe even end up on the practice squad. Mm -hmm. And then that's just said, okay, I still have a job, right? However, I'm waiting around in case if, uh, your receiver, correct? Yes, ma'am. I'm waiting around to see if another receiver go down, then I get my chance. Oh, yeah. You know, um, so it's that that right there. That's why I say the mental aspect of it. You definitely mm -hmm. have to be mentally stable because mm -hmm. guess what? I feel like you know everybody feel like they good, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You know, when you get to that pro level, everybody's the best. So everybody's mm -hmm. giving their all. So I could do this too. Why am I? Well, why am I not out there? You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? So that, how was it like planning uh, for the Jaguars? Because I have a couple of Jaguar um, mm -hmm. uh, viewers on here, so I just want them to get a little shout out. So Duval, Duval, yeah, it's dope. I, um, <laughs> I actually fell in love with Duval. It was it was my first time playing in Florida, um, you know, and uh, it was the people for me. It was the, my teammates. Um, it was actually a team where you know I came from the Indianapolis Colts uh, to, to 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 Duval, and it was a total total opposite um at that moment the coach was pretty much having some success uh the jacksonville jaguars were not but you can tell that the team was different you know the bond between the players was different um and there was a lot of guys that looked like myself you know what i'm saying so uh it was it was also a little different so um i would say that probably was one of my best experience being out there uh being around some of those guys and i want to say of, of course i grew the most uh my rookie year being finishing the uh, season with jacksonville I can say, you know, that's one by far. Jacksonville, um, we probably wasn't winning. Well, certain times we wasn't winning mm -hmm. much games, but that atmosphere was sick. Man. You see them yeah. doing? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So Shannon says, Coach, do you uh, miss playing uh, the game of football? 
Oh, every day. You, sh you should hear how much trash they talk to me on a daily basis. <laughs> they be like, I'm 30. I still got some twitch to me now. Don't, don't fall asleep. But uh, yeah, I miss it every day. And, and that's why I coach, to be around the game, uh, to continue to give the game. And the game continues to grow, so I continue to, I get to grow the game as well. Mm. So being though we know that you coach, um, <clears throat> excuse me, coaching uh, middle high school? Yes. Okay, coaching high school, and you're getting ready to help um, Mr. J.J. Weaver with his camp, Stacy Sun. Yeah. So can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about that and what's that going to be like for you? Oh, it's going to be huge for not only me, but our program. Um, it's going to be huge for the community in Louisville, um, especially the community in Highview, Outer Loop area. Mm -hmm. um, having a guy, a, home, a hometown guy come back to his honor monitor and uh, give back, that's huge. That's what I'm all about. I'm a community guy. Um, JJ pretty much embodies uh, my vision for this school. Um, I told Miss Stacy, I don't know how many times that I want to make him the poster child. It ain't Coach K. It ain't got nothing to do with Coach K. It's JJ. Um, and, and we want to just continue to promote that. Uh, what, what you're going to see is pretty much we had, what was it, two years ago we did JJ's first camp? Right. Um, we had a huge turnout. It was a huge turnout. Um, we had blow-ups, food trucks, you know, all type mm -hmm. of thing. It was, it was like that, that block party feeling. You know, it felt like a big old party. Um, you had these kids running around, and, and, and JJ is one of the biggest celebrities in Louisville. So, you know, it's it's just a real good time, you know, and there's a lot of uh, things in Louisville that are not positive. So when you got something like that around the community and around these kids, where they can show off their talent, and then you got guests, you know, and, and things like that showing up, um, it's huge. So that's what, what they should expect. I would say this year uh, for it to be bigger than the, the, the years it was before, um, we, we got a different location that's going to be on the front line. So it's going to be uh, – right in front of the building uh the people driving by they'll get a, a specific view and uh, it'll be real real cool you know everybody's back outside it's gonna be hot you know it, it's just it just feels like football absolutely so guys this is jj's what camp stacy the perfect fit camp this is his second annual camp for louisville at moore at his alumni june 22nd nope that's the that's the bike oh, that's the bike okay yeah the camp. So June 22nd, uh, from 10 to 2, there's going to be free drinks, free food, free giveaway. Uh, we got um, Texas Roadhouse, who's going to cater the food. So we got thank, big ups to Texas Roadhouse. Um, <laughs> we also got um, Body Armor, who also going to prepare the drinks, give up the Body Armor and uh, Power <laughs> Aid. Um, also, we got many coaches that have came together across Louisville that, um, like, like Coach K say, you know, JJ has, he love, he's passionate about not only the game of football, but he's passionate about the youth of Louisville. And mm -hmm. that's where his heart is. And um, he's determined to not only bring joy to these kids, but also to make a difference, you know. Mm -hmm. So come out, support. Um, if you haven't volunteered, click on the link um, to volunteer. We're still looking for volunteers to come out um, and just support your boy. G give me the uh, website on how they can register, please. Well, there's a link. Um, you can go to the ebright.com, um, the Perfect Fit Football Camp. If you did, you get the huh? Or there's also so I I will post if who all's listening to the side of my voice. Uh, also, Coach K has posted. There's a um, our QR code where you can scan and lead you to the site as well. Oh, so that was the call you sent me. Out. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, not only is JJ um, doing just a um, uh, camp, he's also doing the bike drive. Um, so we want to also talk about that, Stacy, because you also said that he's one who loves to give back. And that's what's needed in the community, especially when you could go back to your community to do it. You know, um, sometimes it could be kind of hard, but you guys make it look so easy. So that's one of the things I definitely want to put out here. And, you know, if one is out there, it may be in another city and you said what Stacy and her son is doing, please do by all means, you know, um, 
pay attention and take notes. But this here is JJ's bike drive. So can you tell us about that one? Now the bike drive is going to be held in Lexington at Creek's um, community center. It's in Lexington. And um, so that's in July, July 20th, between 10 and two. Um, there's, so if you want to, if your kid needs or desires a bike, please click on the link and register. That way we make sure that that kid has the right size bike for himself, him or herself. So, you know, register also, you can also register using that same link, um, to help, uh, Uh oh. Well, while we're waiting for st you, kind of pause this. Me? Yeah. We okay. didn't hear what the last part you said. Oh, um, <laughs> you can go use the same link <laughs> that's on the bike drive um, um, po uh, poster that we're gonna post. There you go. So if you if you want to scan that um, code, it's gonna lead you to a link, and then there's instructions that's gonna ask you if you are a kid that's looking for a bike. So you're going to give your age and the, you know, so we can determine what bike or size bike to purchase for that particular kid. Or you can also use this link if you want to volunteer there. It'll direct you to volunteer. So we're looking for volunteers for, for the bike drive as well. Okay. So the campus in. The campus in June, June 22nd at Moore high school in louisville and the uh bike drive giveaway bike day with jj is july 20th in um lexington at tate's creek community center okay and they do have to register for this event correct yes both events you have to register yes all right so now we heard we heard is denzel wanting to say something Want to say something, nephew? Yeah, I did. I actually had a question. Oh, I had a question for my mama. Ma, what's my ethnicity? Because when people ask me, I just tell them, you know, I ain't gonna say like, really, I want to say because we on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I do. Ma, you on mute? You on mute, ma? Yeah. Hey, God. Hey, hey, Coach McKay, they be laughing like <laughs> serious questions. You know what I'm saying? He be so random. Like I know it's just a question that popped up in my head because somebody asked me that the other day, and I was like, "I'm just the, uh, you know, yeah." Can well, you I just know. use the proper term? What African American? Listen, I Yo, you. then they asked me what type of African, like what tribe. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Nephew, <laughs> he's the Igbo tribe. Tell them the pyramid tribe. Igbo <laughs> gladiator tribe. <laughs> I don't know what y'all gonna do with them. My girl. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Your daddy say tell him you're a Cherokee. A Cherokee? No. Okay. <laughs> That's that, that Indian, must be the general. Yeah, that, that must be the general Indian right there. Hey, look, Coach McKay had to take a sip. Coach McKay had to take a sip. I don't have a reservation. I had a reservation. Yeah, what's wrong with this stuff at all? Oh, my gosh. That I'm was so sorry, Coach McKay. <laughs> He's yeah, the I'm comedian sorry. coach. I'm that sorry. Funny. That was funny. Comedian, <laughs> man, that was a serious question. <laughs> you laughing too hard over here. Coach, so this is your first year coaching? at more um so this this will actually be my third um i coached when i my, my second year I, I didn't plan on coaching at all at more i was actually wanted to be like an athletic director i wanted to be in the business portion of uh sports uh but they kind of pulled me in coaching eighth grade my second year of teaching so i went and coached the eighth grade we did pretty good um um made the playoffs or whatever that may be and then um our coach was actually leaving so they asked me to coach the high school so uh we did really good last year and this will be this actually be my third year Awesome. Well, we talk about the business of football a lot because um, I myself, my son has been in a transfer portal and we actually, I didn't talk to y'all about this yet, but he actually is going to one school, but there's another school that wants him. He's, he's on the cusp of making a decision. It's a business. 
You got to make the business move. And that starts even before high school, right? Like you're saying, having a school where you have sixth grade in that school, it's a business move that you're doing with trying to keep those young men in your school. Um, concerning the business of football, how would you have done things differently compared to when you were in high school? Of course, there were no NIL deals, but just as far as academics and the, and the training part of, of, of the development of a player yourself, and now looking at the recruitment, what would you do differently? And what would you give our parents as far as advice on what they should be doing right now in high school for the business of football? Um, I would say what well, if I would have done anything differently, um, it would have just lean, been leaning more on my mentors. Um, I had two men that were my mentors, Anton Horton and Richard Duncan. Uh, they both are – one is the athletic director at Air Course High School, and the other one is the head coach of uh, J-Town Boys Basketball High School team. Uh, those were two of my mentors that, you know, I listened to and uh, kind of let them help me make my decisions a little bit. Uh, my grandmother was my rock and she was in my corner, but she wasn't really sports related. You know, she was all, you know, she would cook us baked spaghetti before the game. But, you know, she really didn't know um, if these college coaches were telling us the truth or not. You know, it was it was it was different. So um, ask questions, you know, maybe ask more questions, uh, do more research, um, you know, get more facts. Uh, factual information, uh, some things that I would have probably did differently. Uh, but nowadays, you know, um, it's it's definitely about, you know, kind of keeping your business in, you know what I'm saying? Keeping your business in-house, um, being careful who you trust, make sure you're not getting taken advantage of, um, know your worth. Um, you know, it's a lot of things. And I'm also learning uh, when, when college coaches come to my school and, you know, they ask me about players, uh, I kind of flipped the script on them and I asked them about their job. Like, man, what, what y'all doing? You know, what's, what's it like being a college coach over there? You know, and, uh, you know, I'm grateful that a lot of these coaches are real, you know, real people. And they they kind of let me know what's going on. But uh, their college coaches jobs that got difficult. You know, uh, you don't know if you're going to be able to keep a player or not. I know you say your, your son's kind of in that portal. Uh, you know, they're 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 bait. You know, we're, we're throwing bait around. You know, we're trying to make sure that. You know, if, if there's an extra five thousand, ten thousand dollars here or there that we make sure we get that, you know, whatever it may be. So um just being knowledgeable as possible, uh knowledge is the key. Um, you know, and I think that's that's pretty much the, the most important part. Wow. So what would you tell a parent to look for in the recruiting process? What would be a number one red flag? Um, I would say just look for for what you feel is real. Um you know, and, uh, you know, it's nowadays it's on a year to year basis. So, uh, you know, what can you do for me now? Like, like we talked to the coaches and the, and the, and the NFL, you know, they want to, they want to know what have you done for me lately, but these college kids, they need to know what can you do for me now? What can you do for me in the next six months? Um, I don't have, you know, all day, you know what I mean? Or things like that. Um, and, and, and I would pretty much kind of say that. What was the next question? I'm sorry. What was the other question? No, you pretty much answered it. Okay, great, great. yeah. The advice of the recruitment process, right? Especially now with the with this nil thing, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Nil came what 2021, 20, mm -hmm. late 21, something like that. So you know, we were kind of in our sophomore year yeah. in college when nil came on board. So now with this nil thing, you know, you could also, you know, their high school players now are also you know, dimly dabbing in that NIL situation with the portal. So, you know, does that make it difficult now um, for students or high schoolers to kind of, you know, be recruited by a college? I would say yes. Um, and I would say if somebody tell you that it's not, then they lie. Because, um, you know, I, I heard and I and I and I, I told my players this last year. Um, the All American Camp, you know, the All American Camp, where you got all the high, the, the best high school players all over the world. They all come to this All American Camp, and it's probably 150 of them. Um, they, I think they were at Ole Miss or something like this, uh, and uh, I don't know if it was the head coach or the head strength coach um, talking to him, but he told him that he's not taking nothing but five, maybe four or five guys in this year as freshmen. Now, when I heard that, I thought, oh, hold on, maybe I heard something wrong, you know, because when I came in, we had a 90 class, you know, 90 first, we had the biggest class ever at the University of Arkansas when I came as a freshman. But you mean to tell me that you only going to get four or five, you're going to get a handful of guys, uh, true freshmen, full ride scholarships? That's crazy. That's almost yeah. unbelievable. So where are these scholarships going? They're going to the NIL. Yeah. They're going to the transfer portal. 
They yeah. go into guys that, you know, will be a valuable asset. And then you best players in the nation fall where you fall. Now, you know, like he said, yeah, now. the mm -hmm. word now, not now. later. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's and I, and I brought that I brought that up because, you know, I've also had a mom to kind of speak out on that um because it's like it's it's towards the end you know or, or you know, my my son made a decision but the college has not got back to them like what's going on it's like he's been put on this back burner she does what what am i to do what happened next can you talk to someone at uk you know i'm hearing all these things and all these stories and i'm like wow mm -hmm. like you know yes there's almost no hope for these high schoolers coming out of high school who wants to play for college because of nil and the transfer portal but i'm, so I'm glad you said that because ask him i'm sorry uh coach mckay do you think it's going to stand though the way it's going, do you think this, the way they're doing this business is going to last? Um, I, I think it will definitely last because what they did was they woke us up. They woke us up. Um, the gatekeepers, the ones with all the money, uh, the ones that's been millionaires and billionaires, they woke us up and uh, they let us get a piece of the pie. Um, so, I mean, the dude, extreme lengths of will you have, you know, million dollar high school players? Will you have million dollar college players? Maybe not forever. Um, you know, but there will have to be some type of gratitude uh, show to these players because now we know how much these colleges and these 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 guys are making and getting in their pockets. So, you know, mm -hmm. it almost becomes to the point to where, like, you know, either pay us or we ain't playing. Hmm. Yep. So think about that. That's our great time we get ready to do here because let me tell you something. Like you said, nephew said there's no loyalty in the game, right? And we also know that goes from a player on up to the coach. So let me tell you this, right, Crack? Go ahead, Stacy. All right. So with that being said, <laughs> we want to go ahead and show you, uh, Coach McKay, because I'm sure that you heard all about this. So Stacy, come on and tell us all about your flag on the play. Oh, flag on the play, flag on the play, my people. It, it read, it read, it read. Have you guys heard about the story with Ed Reed and Bethune? Eddie came through Bethune like Joe Clark, honey. <laughs> he was mad with Bethune. But my question is, with HBCUs, is it poor funding or is those schools being overlooked? What do you guys think? Coach, what you think? Um, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, yeah. I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I think, you know, these universities are are, 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 are money-hungry universities, and uh, they're all about, you know, spending money on what makes them money. And I think when you look at schools, like, I mean, I've been to University of Arkansas, and I've also been to University of Cincinnati, and the upbringing of, I mean, it's the day one when I stepped on the University of Arkansas, it was top of the line. It was, uh, you know, 110,000 in the, in the stands, and that's just what it was. It's an SEC school. Um, when I stepped in the University of Cincinnati, it was a downgrade. It, and that's just what it was. Now, um, if you go to Cincinnati today and you look at what they got today, it'll it'll show you that winning builds, you know, builds the school up. And they got an opportunity to to get uh, Luke Fickle as the head coach. And he was very, very successful at the University of Cincinnati, took him to the college football playoffs. And if you walk into the stadium, even now, um, I just came from a, a, a basketball game uh kind of talking to some coaches and stuff like that, they'll bid on the indoor facility now, a multi-million dollar indoor facility, things that, you know, even the Cincinnati Bengals didn't have. They still don't have it to this day. The Cincinnati Bengals have a big old bubble outside. Um, and when they get cold, they go in the bubble. So where now, you know, the Cincinnati Bengals used to use our bubble. Now they, I'm pretty sure they'll be coming in and use Cincinnati's new indoor facility uh, when it gets cold outside. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> And I can say, Stacey, to your question, I really think that is both, too. But I think it's also, too, um, HBCUs, they have a lot of HBCUs definitely have some prominent people that come out of there. So oh, yeah. it's basically who's pouring back into uh, the school. Right? right. And not just who's pouring back into the school is the people that's in charge doing the right thing. With exactly. So and that's that why he was the first coach 
to, to be a coach for a university for 25 days because Eddie Reed was airing out the dirty laundry. You know, exactly. he's like, I've been here less than a week and I've done more for this university than any of you guys have. You know, he went in, tore up that field, cleaned it up. And you know, if Ed is saying that the locker room look bad, because <laughs> he played at UM, baby. Don't you dare. Don't don't you dare. No, ma'am, don't you dare. <laughs> don't do that. You know, you know, you know, you know it's bad. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. <laughs> not just he didn't just speak about that locker room. He spoke about we're gonna play the video, the mm -hmm. clipping of him. But just to know that our guy from uh from the U actually went to HBCU. Not only that. See, we so raw over at the University of Miami. We come together collectively and we work together and not against each other. And that's what they did. They got there and they cleaned that field up. They cleaned that little tank thing, whatever they had up. You know, so when you know that you have someone that's coming in that know their stuff, you said it, Coach McCray. I mean, McKay, you said that social media, so most social media is the way of the world. He said that's why he don't even do social media. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Oh, wrong one, sorry. Mutton and showing shit. I chose not to, but now I'm out here walking with the football team, picking up trash. But I'm mutton us, man. Get out of here, man. I should leave. I'm not even under contract doing this. I'm mutton us, man. Get out of here, man. They mutt me. These motherfuckers ain't even clean my goddamn office when I got here. I'm mutt y'all. Get your ass, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. All this shit here was trash in front of me. Who you think got this shit cleared out? That building right there got trash in it. It's fucking trash. What are you talking about? I need no goddamn donors to come out and help out because people just want money. That's right. That's why I don't hell. That's why I don't fuck with social network. Fuck out of here, man. Don't do it, Coach McKay. Don't do yes, it, honey. Change it. Don't do it on social media, Coach. Don't take the change off the coat. Take the change off the coat. Make sure you, you heard what he said. You heard what uh, Coach Reed said. It's all about the money. Get that? So in the NFL, that's what it's all about. So my thing is, if you don't focus on the players that you what, when something works, why fix it? Think about yeah, it. Yeah, but you, I get what you're saying, sis, but there's a way to do things. And yeah. I feel that because Ed is who he is, mm -hmm. he's hot-headed, you know, even playing at the U and in, at Baltimore, you know, he's he going to speak his mind. He's passionate. He's very passionate. Right, and he going to speak his mind at the end of the day. But there's a play, a time and a place for everything. Like, mm -hmm. he could have made, he could have been that rock at Bethune if he would have handled it differently, I believe. He could have been that change. He could have brought about a change and aired out that dirt. There's a there's a way to do things. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I but just see, think that, you, you think about it, we're on the outside looking in. So it was yes, he's a hothead, right? He was a hothead. We don't know that to be true now. You see what I'm saying? And that's why no, hell, it's too late now. He ain't got his job. <laughs> No, but the thing is, he fired. He fired, yes. But the thing about it is, he was even going to go in there and take a pay cut. That says a whole lot about him. That money. No, no, that, no, no. No, you get the you two put, stars mixed up. He wasn't going to take no pay cut. That was Dion that took the pay cut. No, not at Colorado. No, look up the story. Because uh -huh. we had it here. We spoke about it here at the um, on our show. The thing is, he would have spent his own money. That wasn't right. the school money that he spent cleaning up that place. So he really believed in that program. He wanted to help those children. So my right. thing is, the, whoever the man in the back, you know, that wasn't doing the right thing with the monies is the one who kind of liked the church. Yes, he definitely fired. But the thing is, yes, he probably was um, a hothead back then. The states also owe several HBCU. Yeah. The money, that's right. It. Yes, and it's definitely a time and a place to do everything. Right. And that's know, what I'm saying. If he wasn't such a hothead, 
-hmm. he could have brought this, this, all this money for wishing. Because look who, look at him. You know, he's an all American. You know what I'm saying? He played in the league. Like, Ed, Ed Reed had fire under him that yes. he could have brought to that school. But, but because he's a hothead and well, didn't humble himself. The administration, there was a problem with the administration. Mm -hmm. And being a, a professor at an HBCU for 10 years, even I couldn't take it no more. Because mm -hmm. they don't. They don't financially appreciate you the way that you need to be appreciated because you can only give so much, which is even why Dion left. Not that Dion wasn't planning on leaving, but it makes you leave a lot earlier when somebody's stealing from you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so we've always been behind the eight ball. We've always been one peg leg. I mean, let's just, just go there, you know. Coach McKay, even where you are with your budget, your school budget, you only get so much money. Mm -hmm. And it's just a flag all the way around because how am I supposed to produce the next superhero for Sunday football right. on this budget? Right. Somebody got to answer to this. Now, who's going to answer all of this? Right. See, and we need Reed to help us get the answer. <laughs> he, couldn't, he couldn't wait. He just, he just had to cuss these folks out. <laughs> <laughs> passionate he, he was really believing in, in on people you know he really his mind and that's the thing his mind was not focused on money his mind was focused on those children mm -hmm. he wanted to pour back into those children and those families and i think that's where the hurt came from when he was slapped with that thing you know but yeah you're on a budget yeah you're supposed to b uh, build this program on a budget but my thing is to me the money side of it, yes, but what you're going to do as a coach to build these children up? They're not getting any money. You're the coach getting the money. You see what I'm saying? So what can you do to build these children up knowing that, like you said, right now, y'all not a, um, you know, a decent school right now. Uh, I won't say decent, but the best school right now. Um, knowing that, you know what you got to go in and do as a coach. But if you feel underappreciated. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you feel underappreciated, are you going to quit on the kid? Hey, let me tell you something. It's a business. Mm -hmm. So yeah. why do we get upset when the NFL do it? It's it's a business. You we see what I'm saying? Got it like that for real. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's definitely a business. Talking. But and, you and also have to go in with that business like mind. That's you know what yeah. I'm saying? You got to yeah. humble yourself. You know, yeah. if you want to be heard, you, the loudest man in the room is usually the most ignorant one. You feel me? So if you're silent, flag on the play. Go that's ahead. That's a flag on the play, sis. That's a flag. flag. I can't, can't agree with you on that. No, no, what I mean. Let me rephrase that. If you're <laughs> if you're loud and you're screaming, nobody can't hear you. Right. Right. You understand? If we're all raising our voices. And we all try right. to talk at the same time. All we hear is noise, you mm -hmm. know, foul language. People going to get turned off. But if you're calm in a calm manner and you're speaking, you mm -hmm. know, not only with force, but in a calm like manner, you know, that quiet storm, you guys hear me. But if I'm rowdy and I'm rah, 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 rah. But would you say, I'm going to tell you like this. I'm I rowdy. Quiet. I'm not being quiet because when you're being quiet, you're getting ran over. That's just the bottom line. But in his case, I think he carried himself very well until he found out, yeah, I'm getting, they getting rid of me. I think that's when. No, no, no. That happened before. He wasn't, like, he didn't even sign as a coach. Like, all this started, and they were like, why should they hire him if he's bashing the school already? And I think by going to social media, was mm -hmm. the wrong place to do it. You feel what I'm saying? I think that he should have done it differently in order to get his point across mm -hmm. of, you know, of why why he felt the way he felt. But, you know, and then after, you know, they went on, um, I think it was Randall Cobbs who went on Series XM, who's also an alumni from um, Bethune-Cookman. He was the one that said, yeah, so he brought it out. Like, look at this guy. He's already, because 
the first when he first went to Twitter, he was in his car. So he was in his car, and that's when he started, you know, in on the school. So then the school retaliated. Then that clip that you just played was when he went off because they were like, oh, you know what, bro? We good. But then said, we like our kitchen dirty. We don't need you to come up here and clean our kitchen. What <laughs> eat? Right. You know what? And that, that's true too, what Janita said. She said, why does that come up when a black man speak his mind? And that's what, you know, we want to say, uh, I think to me personally, it had to happen. Bottom mm -hmm. line, the reason why I said that, because just like with the Cat, Cat Williams situation, you take so much and then when it come out, it's not going to come out the right way. It's not exactly. that, you know, it's not that he was a hothead. Yes, that's probably who, and that, that worked for him back then. He, that paid him back then to be the hothead. So you see what I'm saying? But now he's an adult and he's going into a, 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 a entrance to these lives of these children. You know, the thing about it is now I have to be a beacon of light for them. But I right. can almost, I, I want to know what was the trigger. You see what I'm saying? I don't think that he just went off just, and I, I could be wrong. I'm not saying that's to be true, but I, Sometimes people action cause a reaction, and when they get the reaction, then they're like, Oh boy, so don't poke the bear, leave that bear alone, you know. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, if you're gonna cry wolf when you poke that bear, I don't know what to tell you. Because at the end of the day, I think something transpired to make Ed go off, and then Prime came off. Remember, they was inside the um, uh, when he finally said he was leaving, and Coach Prime came on and kind of like tried to. You know, calm them down some. You see what I'm saying? And it, then, too, it was also, let's see what bro said real quick. Hold on. Uh, Shannon, um, Ed exposed the top dog. See, that, exactly. Money is coming in, but not putting towards the right thing. So right. it had to happen at the end of the day. <laughs> um, when a white person go off, we never hear it's a time and a place. Hey, uh, it wasn't what he said. It was more so how he said. Yeah, he said that point. Right. That hey. point. That yes. point. That's what I'm getting at. It's not what he said. It's mm -hmm. how he said it. That's a time, the place to go off. Right. You understand? Yes. We already, <laughs> as black people, and especially mm -hmm. our black men, what we always we already look at angry black people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we already got that stigma about us already. Yeah. That's what they see. So we have to change that. And it has to start with us. You know what I mean? I, because I am I am a hothead. I was a hothead. You know, I'll be quick to go off in a heartbeat. But I knew from experience that that won't get me anywhere. You understand? Right. If anything, it will be, it will get me back in the back seat because now they don't want to hear me. I don't, you know, I have no no room because I'm coming in here with all this, this, this you know, and the third. No, 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 no. That's a, that's that's why I mean, that's what I mean when I says it's a time and a place mm -hmm. because you're coming in. We all know HBCU. It's it's happening. Even Dion. Dion has already exposed that. So what Ed should have done was let me go in here. Let me get take some notes. Let me make, let me see where this money go. Let me start asking the right questions, getting these questions to the right people. See, he wasn't worried about the money. He was worried about the children. So that maybe right. he's just, exactly. he got the how home. can you help the children without the money? You got to have the money to help the kids. Right. But what I'm saying is he was coming in blind. He didn't ask the right questions. I can I think that's probably it. You didn't ask the right questions. And questions. that's and you said, Coach McHale, you have to know that right questions to ask so okay. if you don't know but then too bro says it's not it wasn't what he said it was more of how he said it now watch this sometimes it's not always the person that's giving it it could be on the receiving end how they perceiving it you get what i'm saying oh, maybe baby, that's he gave it honey <laughs> oh, he, he definitely gave it, oh, Ed gave it. He, he, he definitely gave it but what oh, i'm saying yeah. is that's when them emotions went to flying and because he knew that, you know, like we can't say what those people did with money, but we all know. And I'm sure, McKay, you can say this, that money situation is a very tricky situation. It breaks up so much. You see what I'm saying? 
Mm-hmm. And, and, and the thing is, if you open and you honest with it and go on and asking the right questions, you know, we it won't it had you nip it in the bud right then and there. You exactly. see what I'm saying? So he maybe he dropped the ball. He didn't he ask did. that question. You know, he went in like, okay, well, I want to help these children. Mm-hmm. So, that's a what you think, Coach McKay? Oh no, I think y'all are hitting the hitting the uh, nail on the head. I definitely think um he thought he would be getting more help and uh and he he just was totally disgusted. You know, it was it was to the points where he was disgusted and he he couldn't he couldn't uh hold his tongue anymore, especially um when he when he probably did ask questions about, you know, getting some sort of help, you know, to kind of make his his dream come true in that in that facility. And uh, you know, they kinda they they rubbed him the wrong way and then you know they got what they got. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you, Stacey, you wait, coming up to that what? NFL level. Yeah, you don't mm-hmm. know what was said for him to is you know for him to click yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. And when you're talking about the business of football, we're talking about a pro football hall of famer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Somebody who has esteemed himself to the highest level. Exactly. And he can make a phone call. Oh yeah. To people, bam. But. The business of it was until I get my contract, mm-hmm. I got to keep my phone calls at a minimal mm-hmm. because what will happen is people will start taking your contacts mm-hmm. and they done gave millions to the school and you're not even there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. But see, that's the thing where we have to understand as a whole, you know, when let's see what, uh, Ed was there for the kids and to make sure they were treated correctly as athletes. They helped bring a lot of money into uh, FAMU. <coughs> also, says, although Ed aged light on the issues at Bethune, do you think changes were made? When they played UM last year, the paint on the helmets was cracking. Students said they had to share uniform. Wow. They played UM? Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you just hear that? They play UM. It's that tune-up game. Money game. Yes. Oh, yeah, right. Money game. It's all about the money. Mm-hmm. You know, but going back to what bro said, do you think, like, basically, he was there for the kids and to make sure they were treated correctly as athletes. Did, um, did it bring a change? It I don't know. think it did. It did. Look at what Dion did at Jackson State. I've talked to many alumni at Jackson State when, when we were down there at uh, Alabama A&M. And you can't take a team and even throw them money and change overnight. You can't do that. Right? right. Okay? Am I right? Yeah, 100%. It takes so much more because it's an intricate network. We got to remember, you got academics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got equipment. Yeah. Yes. That alone, like, we were at Alabama a and We didn't have the names on the back of our jerseys. Mm-hmm. That cost $17,000. You think we about to spend money on that? <laughs> you <laughs> said bread. Yeah. Yeah. $17,000. Uh, just Wow. Well, yeah. that's the thing. You know, there. think about it. Our kids are going to these schools. And I remember going back, Stacy, to you um, with JJ, as far as when he was going through the thing with his father and, you know, getting the proper help that he need. You see what I'm saying? He took initiative. He didn't let that stop him. He took initiative to say, okay, well, let me start X, Y, and Z so I can shed some light on X, Y, and Z. You see what I'm saying? So he chose to, this happened to me and I couldn't get the help. So let me be the change. Mm-hmm. See, his mind wasn't that, okay, focused on self. How can I help others around me that may be dealing with the loss, dealing with grief, dealing with, you know, they, they, they you know the loss of a parent. You see what I'm saying? So I think with every situation, this is only thinking, hypothetically thinking, like he went in solely of let me help these kids out and not asking the right questions, and I'm going to stand on that. I really just think he dropped the ball on the questions that he didn't ask. So you <laughs> go, UM their names on the back of their jerseys. UM. What's the problem? 
You yeah, got their names on the I back said of the Alabama A and M. He might he must have thought I <laughs> no, said he, he being funny. <laughs> He been funny to you. Uh, that's what I thought. That's why I was laughing. <laughs> that's what he said. He said you were because oh, but okay. So we had the flag on the play. We talked about Ed Reed. We talked. Remember how when uh, Prime had left Colorado, he was getting oh, not up. Colorado. He's still at Colorado. You mean Jackson? Left Jackson State. They threw that man up under the bus. They, yeah, they really owed thought him some money and they had to be quiet because that came out. They owed him yeah. money. Yeah. They no, but I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is they were throwing him up on the bus, like mm -hmm. under the bus. Like, how could he walk on these kids like that? We never know the But you know story. who were doing that? Who? Us. Yeah. Yes. We were doing that. We were doing that because, you know, people also, like family members, came to me and said, you know, how can you let my son had. 30 some offers, okay? All D1 schools, um, um, all, all across the board. Yeah. So, you know, he was, I was asked, you know, why would I not let my son go and play? First of all, it's, it was JJ's choice. Mm. You know, we we allow him to make that choice because that's his life. He has to live it. You know, right. he has to be with and deal with those people on a day to day basis. So that was his choice, first off. Second off, second, I, they asked, you know, why would you let him go to Kentucky, you know, and, and play with all these white people and, and why not go to a black school, you know, yeah, HBCUs and they need players so they can win games. This is why they don't have a strong football team because all these good black athletes are going to these predominantly white owned schools, you know, and things of that nature. So. I looked at it like this. First of all, it's my son's choice. Right. Second of all, we, we're not looking at color. We're looking at the opportunity that he can get while he's there at these schools. Okay. What can this school provide for him? What opportunity he can get from, you know, we looked at it like we had to go in looking at it like as a business. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Not only is he's getting a a, a well-rounded education, but what can also make him grow and he can use that beyond college. You understand? So that's where we were. And a lot of the schools that he were, he got offers for, did not provide that for him. Or at least we didn't see that. You know what I'm saying? So it was a lot of us that was dogging uh, my boy out, Deion Sanders, because he went to Colorado. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot of it is ignorance. You know, we were talking about the myths. I know Erica had asked you about the myths, Coach McKay. And a lot of things that, that people do is just out of pure ignorance, not knowing. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. because I got that a lot when it was when George Floyd, that was the next year when people were like, they were saying, even, even Deion's comments, they were saying, y'all need to send y'all kids to the HBCUs, mm -hmm. you know, people have no idea what goes into this whole recruitment process. They don't they have no idea what, what it goes into. You know, if I send my son to Morehouse, that's $57,000. How much of that is actually going to be full ride scholarship money to play right. football? It's mm -hmm. not a football school. Mm -hmm. We're over here. We were at UK. That was taken care of easy almost two hundred thousand dollars easy mm -hmm. take care of don't have to worry about anything it's the opportunity and it's unfortunate that the color is put on there and you got to make a decision mm -hmm. well look what coach mckay said he said um 150 kids coming out to a camp only six only six <laughs> you see what i'm saying so some of these kids really just don't stand a chance you know, they're only, I don't care if they went out there and played they butt off. And we have to say sometimes too, it plays a big part. Favoritism plays a big part. You know, I like this kid, you know, maybe he liked the kid character and the kid is probably not pulling as much weight. You see what I'm saying? This kid is going to represent my organization good, but he's not really a good player. So let me kind of like stick him around and let me coach him a little bit that plays a part six people out of 150 people yeah that's because nil and the portal 
Oh. That's why. <laughs> Yeah. See, that's something you again, like it's I think this whole process, um, it constantly changed. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's so much that happened then, you know, that's happening now. You see what I'm saying? Even as far we talked about and that's another subject I want to bring here about the financial aid. A lot mm -hmm. of times the parents are even stand on top of that. The kids, they're supposed to focus on football, right? And should be they schooling. But the thing about it is, um, what about their financial aid? What happens like you, uh, Cam, that you said like 50,000, that school costs $50,000. Well, how much can I get from this school? They just got a big check, okay? A very hefty check, okay? But how much can my kid get? What is offered to my son? How can I find out what can my, how can this school benefit my son as far as uh, helping, if they're not a football school, how can they help my son progress to the next level? Because guess what? He's setting himself up for the next 30, 40 years of his life. So, I'm right. But we're here live today with the girl Erica Wilson that it had to happen for our Monday Night Madness with Leveling Up with Coach McKay and the moms. If you guys have anything that you want to leave with the audience on today, because I know Stacy spoke about it earlier about being hungry, and I smell that good cooking downstairs. So, Sissy saying, what would you like to leave with our audience on today? I would just leave with the audience, moms. Don't live your dreams through your kids. Support your kids' dreams. Amen. Stay My turn. Here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to leave with the audience. Always come, never handle anything through anger. You will not get far and the volume is turned off. Always come clear, come through with a clear mind and a level of calmness. And then you will get heard. That's my my spiel for today. All right. Cam. I just want everybody to make sure that you set your intentions today on the eclipse day. Um, you can't deny what's happening. I know we can talk about football, but life is happening and you can't forget about your spiritual connection to the universe. And so I just want to make sure that everybody is aware that they need to set their intentions on what they want mm -hmm. out of life, not just now, but in your future and let that be for yourself for your family and for those you love. Mm, that's good. That is so good. Coach McCray. Um, <laughs> if I believe anything, I would just encourage um, parents, players, uh, coaches, uh, just to be knowledgeable about anything that you that you want to do, that you want to know about. Um, I was told by a coach of mine that uh, when you're serious about something, you can never take, too, take it too serious. So um I always just try to get as much knowledge as you can because knowledge becomes power mm, that's good that is good and again like i always like to say what alan say never let anyone write your story at the end of the day you hold your pen to your chapter and it's however you want to write that's what it's going to be uh first of all coach mckay thank you thank you so very much sister stacy for bringing on coach mckay that's my dog <laughs> a lot of Jews that was dropped on here tonight. And like he said, Coach McKay earlier, it's amazing how God brings things full circle because I sent Alan your picture. And he was like, yeah, I know him. He was like, what he's up to? So, man, I'm telling you, God would definitely put people in your circle for a reason. And please do hold on to your great people, people of God. So um, we will be back here next Monday, God's willing. Tomorrow, I have my inner, I'm um, sorry, I have my prayer broadcast. Girls talk with Dr. B. And tomorrow's talk is handpicked by God. How many of us know that many of us are called, but few of us, few of us are chosen. So tomorrow, if you can come back with me here tomorrow at 530 for the prayer broadcast, we would love to have you. Um, so if that's all, Coach McKay, we do not like leaving this broadcast for sending out some virtual hugs. See, Denzel is not on here tonight, Coach McKay. He go to war with me about these hearts. Let's see who could get them tonight. <laughs> Cam, you can't get them tonight. 
Ooh, I gotta do some up. I gotta do some upgrade. This oh, Jag, don't see co- <laughs> I know my other word. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got enough love for all of us, and you just appreciate it. it. Appreciate it. No problem, no problem. So God bless you all. Until next time, you ladies rock. Thank you guys so so very much, Coach McCray. The floor is open. You almost you always welcome to come back. But right. guys, think about going to uh, JJ's um, website or. Eventbrite to register. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, yes. so we'll not forget the uh tell them about the uh back, I mean the camp and the um so the bike drive, camp and bike drive. The the camp you can go to eventbrite.com slash uh the perfect fit camp for the football camp or event drive eventbrite.com <laughs> uh bike drive and also register there. Or they can go to your page, boss. On my my page, of course. Um, <laughs> Tell me your I page. am boss hog underscore boss lady slash underscore boss hog on IG. I am also Stacy Sherrell on Facebook and Stacy Sherrell on Twitter. Or you can also follow um, the Perfect Fit that's on IG and also Twitter. Or Coach K, Coach McKay. All right, all right, all right. So y'all lay a while for JJ's camp. Guys, if you know anyone that's in the surrounding areas or in the area, please do have them to register via Eventbrite. Uh, I'm sure you get a chance to meet Coach McKay hands-on and not just Coach McKay, the JJ Weaver. God bless you all. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.